full throttle, it's round seven. Paul Brown's the man to beat. Julian Ryder brings us bang up to date. No one has got near Paul Mara Brown over the last three races. Three pole positions and three wins. We saw him win in the wet at Brands and go to the top of the table here on full throttle. But since then, he's proved that win was not just down to the weather conditions. At Superfast Thruxton, he had to deal with Scotsman Jim Moody on the Crescent Suzuki and the Snatterton winner, Ozzie Dean Thomas, on the Tony Scott tuned Honda CBR before he took the chequered flag, only just ahead of a brawling pack led by Phil McCallan, Mike Edwards and the rest of the usual suspects. That was win number two for Mara and his Honda. Next up, it was Alton Park at yet another pole position. Things looking good. New leathers, new paint, new team name. This time, some of the opposition gave Mara a hand. Dean Thomas found his gear linker to become semi-detached on lap one. Jim Moody and his Suzuki started from the front row, but mechanical problems soon put the Glasgow man back in pit lane. As usual, the pressure came from Mike Edwards on Honda number five and Ian Simpson on number 22. But freak weather conditions stopped the race early. It was fine on the start, finished straight, but raining out the back. But it was another win for the man called Mara. Oh, you've made the 600 virtually your own this year so far. You're really on a roll, aren't you? Yeah, at the minute things have gone real well for us, but uh, started a bit steady at the start of the year. We had a few suspension problems, changed the Pro Flex unit, and never looked back since then. Things have gone really well. Good sponsorship, good bike, good results. Uh, it's a bit of a change mm. of form for you, isn't it, really? Yeah, last two years before this, I had a fairly quiet year in 95 with the R245, but um, it's just like a superbike. I wasn't quite ready for it yet, but I think I am now. and. Things are looking good this year. So that's what you're aiming for, superbikes at the end of the day, that's your ultimate goal? Yeah, we're going to develop the Firestorm, the new 1000 uh, V-Twin for Honda, hopefully for a full superbike year next year, but we're going to get some rounds in at the end of this year just to see how things go. With the same team and the same sponsor? Yeah, the Irish Performance, yeah, Sanyo, uh, yeah, Honda, everything the same. What about Mallory Park, is it going to be a good track for you? Mallory's been a good circuit to me over the few years that I've been racing, so hopefully you know, the good luck run will keep going. Paul Brown around the paddocks, you've always been a popular figure, haven't you? Was there any time during the doldrums of the last couple of years you thought you might have to retire? I thought about a proper job once, but then I changed my mind. No, I mean, I've always had confidence in myself that I can ride well if I get the proper machinery, and, you know, this year it's been proven, so, no, I've no chance of retiring yet. Tell me, why do they call you Barra? <laughs> I can't, it's a family show. <laughs> <laughs> The 600 British Championship is about to get underway. Paul Brown is on pole. Can he make it four out of four? It's a big question. Doesn't the less be first. Julian, it's over to you. Well, I thought that was funny. And there's how good a job the man's doing. Paul Brown has a 28-point lead, more than he gets for a race win, ahead of the consistent Simpson and Hill. But when we talk about a mix of age and experience, it's usually a cliche. But look at this front row. Mara, Edwards, Whitby, the veteran's veteran, alongside 16-year-old Jamie Tosland in only his fourth race at British Championship level. Jim Moody and the Suzuki are back on row two, along with Ian Simpson. While back on row three, we have Dave Heal, Dean Thomas and Phil Borley. And Tosland is in front of all that experience. 30 laps then of Mallory Park, it's a short track and into the run, into Gerrard's already, wheelie up in the air, smoke coming off the front side and look at that from the second row of the grid, 22 come through, Ian Simpson the Scotsman, brilliantly into the long, long Mallory Park, right hander of Gerrard's, they took the barrier back but look at this, oh, teary bit so fast, 100 miles an hour, all the way around, it's a massive horseshoe, onto the back straight then, down towards the S, he's already coming underneath him, does he? No! Simpson holds it out there from three, Paul Brown. Brown, he's just warming up, Jules. Yeah, Tosland is third, then Mike Edwards is there, number five, the old boy, here we go. My favourite place, the hairpin, yes! Oh, oh. Mara chucks it in, well, dear me, taking no prisoners onto the bus stop. Horrible little part of the track. 
Nobody likes it. It was put there to slow the riders down before they hit Devil's Elbow. A frightening left-hander with there already. Brownie leads over the line. Simpson second. Toesland in third place. Fourth is Spike Edwards. And looking for a way round the outside of Gerrards. Boy. <laughs> Get on it, Mike. He usually does. He's a hero. Been there, done that. Ex-champion. We're talking about number five. Wigan's oh. finest, Mike Edwards. Straight round the outside. Edwards looking for a way by and side by side into the S's. Simpson under pressure from that young man, James Toesland. What a star this kid is already. And he's not intimidated at all, is he? He's out there with such experienced guys and he's just rubbing elbows with them. Wonderful to see. At the hairpin, Toesland on the tight line, rubbed his shoulder on that work and he's under Simpson. He's under Simpson. Look at that. That was brilliant. Really good race craft from the young man as well. There's Philip McCallum going through on number 11, the Ulsterman. But it's Toesland in second place, chasing now number three race leader. That is Paul Mara Brown at Gerrard's. Toesland is 52, 22 is Ian Simpson. Well, Simo really quick at this level. Mike Edwards again on that wide old line right out there. That scares me, that really does. But all this is letting Mara get away. The punch up the second, third and fourth, doing the championship leader a big, big favour. Steve Plater in fifth place on number 57. Then it's number 10, Phil Borley. Well, he's riding the uh, lottery. Oh, get off that bike. That is a big get off there. So rolling over and over in the track. Deary me, at the S's. Mike Edwards. Mike Edwards takes a big tumble. Gets on the power through the right hander. Yes, they've red flagged it. And absolutely, Mallory Park. Oh, deary me. That is one of the biggest high sides you're likely to see. The rear wheel sunk right up. Oh, look at that. Well, number 57 there, Steve Plater, in all sorts of trouble, steps on Edwards' bike as Edwards rolls to a stop. Mike Edwards is in the medical centre. We don't expect to see him back for the restart of this race, that's for sure. The race will be restarted. Those first couple of laps will not count. No aggregate scoring. We start again. But, as suspected, without Mike Edwards on the front row of the grid, so... In the foreground, we have number 34, that is Howard Whitby. He didn't show much in the first race. This is his second chance, and away he goes. Got a flyer there, though, didn't he? though, didn't he? <laughs> Did indeed, but look again, Ian Simpson from the second row. Up into second place, does he go? Yes, forces Whitby out, but it's James Toesland, the 16-year-old, that leads this Ballery Park race. Wow, a shock to the established stars. Brownie goes around the outside. He's in third place. Whitby's in second place. Well, we did wonder what happened to him in race one. Look at that traffic, heavy, yes. heading for the hairpin. <laughs> like Piccadilly Circus. Through the S's first, of course, then down to the hairpin. Keith said he likes this place, it terrifies me every time I see a race here. Yeah, Mallory Park, the friendly circuit, unless you have to fight on it, of course. Toesland from Whitby, Whitby round the outside. That was a great move from Whitby there. He just dropped it over the nose of Toesland, forced Toesland tight. And then Brownie having a good look as well. At least twice. Toesland's age, of course, Howard Whitby. <laughs> Glad you said it, not me. I'm running away quick. Steve Plater in fourth place on bike number 57. He was there about in race one, or part one, I should say. Ian Simpson, though, back in fifth place at the moment. There it is, Phil Borley in sixth. Whitby, Toesland, Brown, Plater, Simpson and Borley, top six. Don't expect it to stay like that, though. Now, Toesland is amazing, me. Only his fourth race at this level of competition, and it looks like he's been there for years. Astounding. Here comes oh, Mara. Yeah, well, there you go. A bit of experience, though. Gets Mara past Toesland into the S's. Oh, this is where Mike Edwards got it a bit live a little earlier on. He's watching from pit lane. It is Whitby leading from Mara Brown sideways again. Toesland in third place, but played her all over him. Simpson behind him on bike 22. Little wheelie there. Whoa, what's going to happen in this race? I'm amazed by Mara's entrance to the hairpin, Keith. First time I saw it, I thought it was a mistake, but he's broadsliding in deliberately. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Whitby leads over the line. All Brown right. comes Consistently. To, Brown comes to the inside at Gerrard. Brown looks determined. Whitby's time is numbered at the front, I'm sure of that. Toesland watches on, possibly in amazement. Something like that. Howard Whitby really having a, well, an Indian summer, isn't he? He's going beautifully well. Went well at Brands, going well here. Yeah. Indian summer is about to come to an end. No, Not yet. Quite. That's close. He's obviously riding spot on because Brown is having trouble. Toesland still there. Oh, oh neat. Toesland nips underneath Paul Brown for second place. Well, that's like a slap in the face. <laughs> Take that, Mara. He won't be amused, to put it mildly. Wheeling the short distance down to the bus stop she came. Then blasting down the devil's elbow. Not a place to dump it, I can tell you. You'll end up in your own van in the pits. 
Whippy leads. Toesland second. Brown is third. Being chased by Plater on bike 57. 22 is Ian Simpson. 10 back there is Phil Borley. Vastly experienced Phil Borley, nearly a European champion, but he's having trouble staying in touch at the moment. And the more I look at Jamie Toesland, Keith, the more I think I'm looking at a star oh! of the future. Whitby up on the seat, that'll give Toesland the momentum down the back straight and into the S's. Toesland hit the front. Whitby goes second. Well, that was a warning for Whitby. I wonder if he'll take heed. Up towards the hairpin then. Toesland leads. Whitby on the outside line, Tozen's got it covered on the defensive inside line, but oh, the old guy's coming round the outside again! He's done that once, he's got it perfect, but this time the youngster's got it sorted out. Oh, McCallan taking the... Uh, the TT route. The, the Ulster line. So, uh, Ulster and McCallan on a wide way, he must be wondering what's going on here at the moment, he can't get in touch yet, he's been fast on the 600s this year. Pitboard's out, Whitby looks behind him, Tozen lead, Brown comes to the inside this time, still play the fourth. Howard Whitby, the old guy, really showing that age is no barrier, isn't he? Although Paul Brown will have something to say about that very shortly, I'm sure. It's supposed to get more sense when you get older, don't you? Yes, that's the theory. Tozen leads at the S's now. Whitby still in second place on 34, comes to the inside. I don't know whether it's to block Paul Brown or whether it was a serious manoeuvre on the inside of Tozen. I don't think so, somehow. Watch him round the outside again. He's got this line really well sorted, but Tozen too far ahead. Surely this time the youngster. Oh, oh, Plater comes through. That was a great manoeuvre there from number 57, Steve Plater's Honda. Really a great manoeuvre from him. Ground going backwards because number 10 is next up. That's Phil Borley, who's been lurking with intent for all the race there. Tozen leads. Whitby second. Plater now up into third place. Back to fourth goes Brownie with Phil Borley in fifth place. Ian Simpson has slipped to sixth after a fast start in the first part of this race. Plater, third in the race and third in the championship. We don't uh, mention him often enough, I think. He's always a, a good boy, always picks up the points, though. Already we're back at the S's again. They really are going to turn to cheese, aren't they? 30 laps of this place. Always matter. Yeah, straight through. That's a great move from an experienced man there. Left-hander of the S's, on the gas, hard as you can, up the hill, towards the S's, toes and leads. Whitby again on that wide line. Surely not round the outside again, Howard, yes. yes. <laughs> Third place is Brown, Paul Brown, being chased now by Steve Plater. Into the bus stop, Phil Borley, a watching brief from him on bike number 10. James Toesland leads from Whitby, from Brown, from the charging, Steve Plater. James Toesland still leading, Mara Brown though, charging up the inside of Whitby. Whitby is displaced back to third, it's James Toesland that leads now by, well, some distance compared with how this race has gone. Mara Brown in second place, on the charge at the hairpin. Right, now we have the challenge we wanted to see. The championship leader in second place, hunting down the 16-year-old, a man, Keith, who many people think is the next hope for a star in British racing. Yeah, Mick Corrigan, the man that signed him, certainly knew what he was doing when he saw this kid. He certainly got him before everyone else. Anyway, Whitby under pressure from Plater as well for that third place. Plater moving through on bike 57. But it is still James Tozen that leads. You wouldn't think he was only 16. Well, Whitby back to third as well. Two real ding-dong battles on the track. Howard Whitby, number 34. Steve Plater, number 57. But they're losing touch now with the leading two. There's Phil Borley, number 10, still in touch in fifth place. But a bit of a spectator at the moment. At the S's, through the right-hander, flick left, on the power, flat out, up the hill, towards the hairpin, onto the brakes. Really tight little hairpin, this one. And Mara Brown put it on the style, scrubbing the speed off of the bike sideways. Whitby holding on to that third place just from number 57. Here they come, charging down the hill. Steve Plater not able to get past the veteran in front of him at the moment. He's running so well, is Howard Whitby, so well, but look at that dice at the front. Brown not making a dent in young Jamie Toesland's lead. Steve Plater, though, all over Howard Whitby for third place. And I've got to say, the lap speeds here are pretty good as well, so Toesland is not doing it uh, slowly. He certainly isn't, and if you were in pushed by Paul Brown, the guy who's won, I remind you, the last, what, three races in a row? Yep. Hold for last three, here comes yes, Plater! Yes, that looked Whoa. like it was a, a desperate move coming from Plater there, but not able to get up the inside of Whitby. Whitby's put on the brakes everywhere, we've seen that. Here it is, the battle for the lead. Tozeland in the middle of the track, chased by Paul Brown! Whoa! <laughs> Take aim, pull trigger, I think is the way to go. <laughs> And he got away with it. He got away with it indeed. Well, I think he shocked Whitby, that's why. So Plater goes third on number 57. Yeah, there are a variety of lines at Mallory Park hairpin, and some of them work. Here we go then, Brownie trying to put Tozeland under pressure. Plater comes through in third. Borley looks like he's woken up now. 
back there in fifth place on bike number 10 because he's attacking Whitby as well now. Watch for that at Gerrard's corner. Tosland, though, he's so good on this exit of Gerrard's. Tosland's bike is superb handling out of Gerrard's onto this back straight. And the momentum that he carries all the way down the short straight to the S's, well, it seems to thwart every effort that Brown has got to try and get on terms with him. Paul Brown, well, he must wonder what he's got to do with this kid in front of him. And it's all Hondas. All the front five guys are on Hondas. There's no machinery advantage here. Comes Howard Whitby, playing it sideways. Take that, sir. Yeah, Whitby's been good on the brakes there, hasn't he? He's, <laughs> he dropped it across the nose of Toesland a couple of times early on in this race. And uh, he's shown us again that his braking performance, if nothing else, is absolutely superb. Down Devil's Elbow, then, comes Whitby in third place. Everybody takes a glance at the pit board. They come round here so quick, I'm surprised they've got time to change the numbers, let alone to read them if you're on the bike. Absolutely. Ian Simpson back in sixth place still, but he's under severe pressure now as well. But at the front, it's still that young un being chased by Paul Brown, wondering how he's going to do it. And here they are, the leading two, heading into the S's again. 52, Jamie Tolton, just 16 years and five months old. Paul Brown, no veteran, but considerably older. An ex-British 250 champion, no less, in second place. I cannot overemphasize the quality of man that Jamie Tolton is racing with. I'll second that. Paul Brown, very cool, though, at the moment. He looks like he's hunting down James Tolton to me. It looks like Brown is certainly on a nice, easy line at the moment. Well, the same could be said for these three, of course. Bill Borley. Bringing up the rear in fifth place at the moment, Whitby and Plater. What's happened to the Borley there? It looks like he really goes a bit slack coming down the hill at Devil's Elbow. Whitby looks both sides, don't know where he's got the time to do that. Through comes Plater and Gerrard. No, he doesn't. Whitby again. That is a very fast entry into that turn. Something like 110, 120 miles an hour on these bikes. Really very quick on the way. And just a quick dab on the brakes and chuck it on its side over the bumps. And if you're not careful, you'll end up like John Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds out of the Superbikes because of an accident in qualifying. And these Super Sport guys, of course, they're on treaded tyres, not full racing slicks. Makes it even more impressive what's going on here. Well, certainly there's been tyre wars in this class. The Dunlop seem to have the edge at the moment, though, as Plater comes up the inside. A lot of the riders really complaining that they've not got the grip they want, except if they're on Dunlops, of course, and the front two men are on Dunlops. That might well be the reason why they're so far in front. Yeah, Pirelli, the other tyre company that's got a good record in this class, not having a good day at Mallory Park. Here it is, Toesland with the calm, cool, collected. Paul Mara Brown behind him. That's a nickname, not a hyphen. Yep, Mara, it's a South African slang for mate, you'll be pleased to hear. I'll explain it some other time. When we've got time, Mara makes his move. Yeah, not there he's not going to, surely. He's, oh, all the way round, the long way round. I take it back, Paul Brown. <laughs> That was superb. Is that it, Keith? Has he been sitting there watching this newcomer, the championship leader, the guy dominating this series for the past couple of months? He's made his move. My view is he's gone a little bit early because Toesland has now an opportunity to follow the more experienced man around Mallory Park. And when you're 16, you don't know your limitations yet. And he's such a nice, quiet, well brought up young man as well. Who? Really Paul impressive. Brown? No, not Paul Brown. <laughs> Toesland, really, this kid could be big. Well, wait and see. Brownie leads at the right-hander of the S's, and Toesland is all over him like a raincoat. Use that phrase for a while. You've been watching those Americans again, haven't you? Up towards the hairpin, and Toesland looks to me like a boy that is not going to be thwarted in his attempt to win this race because Paul Brown has not been able to make a break. And Paul Brown now looking a trifle ragged in places. He's obviously piling on the coals. He's trying to make a break, trying to break the youngster, and the super smooth kid from Sheffield is there. Yeah, the big thing about track craft, though, is experience counts. We'll wait and see whether that counts for much, as Toesland is rubbing tyres with Paul Brown at the moment. Well, Mara really has got to work this one out, because he's not going to drop James Toesland, and Toesland's exit speed of corners is superb. He really gets it on really hard. Watch this down this back straight, almost alongside Paul Brown again, and that was all down to the fact that he exited Gerrard's so very, very well. He's faster through the last third of Gerrard's than Paul Brown has been all day long. Up the inside, up the inside, no. Do you know what? I think Jamie Tozen's sitting there looking at this and just working it out. Well, I'm starting to think you're right, Keith, because I assume that when Mara went past a lap or two ago, he was going to put in a couple of quickens, put a couple of seconds on the kid and have the race won. But that is not what is happening. Make no assumptions in super sport racing, I think, is the moral of the story. Brown leads down to Gerrard's. Tozen's in second place. These two well out on their own. Plater is holding third. Whitby is fourth. Morley is fifth, McCallum now has steadied up and moved up into sixth place. Ian Simpson being displaced in a rearwards direction. 
Look at that again. Tozlan out of Gerrard. Superb stuff from him. He rode round the outside on the power. Got the momentum all the way along the back straight and dropped it over the nose of Paul Brown. If Paul Brown didn't think he was in a race, he does now. That was astounding. Look at Mara trying hard again. He gets it sideways on the back brake. Heavy coming into the hairpin. He's starting to look behind him, Keith. You might be right. Yeah, great track craft from Mara Brown, though. Superb bike control. But Tozla, look at that, out of Devil's Elbow as well. The power is on so much earlier. Mike Edwards is wishing he had that kind of grip. Well, I think I got the plot right, Keith. I got the characters the wrong way round. It's the youngster who's dealing out the lessons. I think you're absolutely right. We're at Gerrard's. The long, long, fast right-hander. Really, it's a very difficult corner. You can build power in the middle, build speed in the middle of that turn, but it's exit speed that counts. That gets you into the braking area at this next corner, the right-hander of the S's. And Brown is beaten. Well, that was his last chance to get past him at the S's. He's got one more corner before the checkered flag, and Brown is not going to do it. I'm sure he's not close enough. Tozlan is protecting that inside position. He's only got to get this corner right, surely. And Paul Brown will be beaten. He's looking round. Oh, a wheelie. He concedes. James Tozlan is going to win the British Super Sport 600 Championship round here at Mallory Park. Oh, unless he crashes on the line, that is. Deary me. Tozlan all over the place. Brown is beaten back into second place. Incredible stuff. Steve Plater gets third. A totally unprecedented win for the 16-year-old. And look at the array of talent behind him. Not just Brown, but people like Borley, so nearly a European champion. TT hero McCallan. Amazing. Keith with the winner. Trackside. James, very, very, very impressive, I've got to say. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Paul Brown on form round here at Mallory Park was uh, a man to beat. A good scout. You must be feeling brilliant. Oh, oh lost for words. I just can't believe it. Um, I qualified on third. Uh, but that was just a one-off lap, which I luckily got, and um, I was hoping for a podium finish in this race, and uh, just can't believe it. Somebody less informed was stood next to me on the, po on the podium over there and saying, uh, what's this kid do last year? And somebody else said, a paper round. <laughs> yeah, I can quit the paper right now, I think. Uh, now beaten by spotty little Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? You were there once, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but I've still got a spot there. <laughs> yeah. He put you under a lot of pressure, didn't he? He did, yeah. Fair play to James. He rode really well. On Dunlops as well, so there's no tyre advantage. He rode really good. Mara may have been beaten today, but he's extended his championship lead to 40 points. A nice round figure in front of the ever-consistent Ian Simpson. 600cc British Championship race then goes to a man who we're going to see a lot more of, I'm sure, the youngster James Tozlan. Next week, it's the Superbikes back here at Mallory Park. See you then. <laughs>